Welcome, party people. We are having a little fun, uh, trying to have some fun amidst all the craziness and uncertainty right now, trying to keep a little light mood in the air. But we got a question to answer for you today. We're doing it sort of interview style from both of our bedrooms, separately, obviously, social distancing. But the question is, it's, a, it's actually a great question. I mean, we've been getting it on radio, but we have more time to discuss it right now. But is it a dirtbag move? Is it cool? Is it appropriate? Is it okay to look for investment opportunities in the real estate market during what's an obvious shift kind of craziness uh, due to coronavirus, due to stock market volatility, due to um, social distancing, due to shelter in place orders and throw in a bunch of other craziness, interest rates, um, census, you know, just so much going on right now. There's a ton of uncertainty. A lot of people are assuming nothing's happening in the real estate market right now. And I'll throw a couple other things in. A lot of the national real estate, like venture capital backed big websites that like make cash offers on houses and things, they've left the, they've left the business. They've left the market. Whether it be temporarily or permanently, we don't know yet. But at, at, at the short term, uh, a lot of the institutional investors have left. They're, the ones that are advert. I'm not going to name any names, but the ones that are out there advertising, hey, we'll make an offer based on full value of your home, close whenever you want, we'll pay cash, blah, blah, blah. Um, they're not doing that anymore. The three major guy, uh, you know, businesses that do that in our market, all three of them have stopped making offers. And even worse, the transactions they were currently involved in, they've killed those deals. So there's a bunch of people wondering, how the heck do I do that? So the question we're going to answer is, is it a dirt bag move to look for investment opportunities during a coronavirus real estate market? Or if you're watching this later, during a, uh, you know, community-wide uh, concern, community-wide crisis, you know, statewide, nat national, citywide, uh, when there's fear and sadness in the air, is it a are you a vulture if you go looking for investment opportunities? I'm going to give you a one word answer and then we'll unpack it. And Mason can pepper me with some of the questions we've had this week and some follow-ups and things. Here's my one word answer. No, it is not a manipulative, sketchy, slimy. Do you have a gasp sound effect that you can play? <gasps> but it's, it's not. It's not one of those. It's more like, no, here's why there's applause. I'm serious about that. Here's why there's applause. We have got to keep our economy moving forward. And housing is a huge driver of our economy. When someone buys or sells a house, even an investor, uh, remodelers get involved a lot of the time. Carpet cleaning, cleaning services, lawn care, furniture stores, you know, cable hookups, electric hookups, you know, cell phones get, I mean, things that you do with a family in a home start to impact the community, right? Uh, the, 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 the hardware store, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever generates a little revenue. Um, so when you think about the amount of economic activity that comes with a new homeowner in your community or uh, another homeowner in your community or, or whatever, um, taking that away from a local economy is devastating. Now, I'm not saying this because we want to continue to sell houses right now. We do. I don't apologize for that. But what I'm saying is when you think about looking for an investment opportunity, you're talking about certainly being profitable and earning a living, but also you're talking about the employment opportunity and economic trickle down and, and ripple out of all of what we just said. And so in so many ways, investors are tremendous assets to our communities. Now, a lot of times investors get looked down upon because they're trying to buy homes at discounted prices. There's nothing wrong with buying a home at a discounted price as long as you are not taking advantage of someone. It's one thing to take advantage of a situation and an opportunity. It's a totally different thing. And in my opinion, a not cool thing to take advantage of someone, right? To mislead someone. And, and that's why I have such a beef with those big national companies and their promises about buying your house for cash because they're deliberately misleading people. They are clearly going to offer a discounted price. Now, there's nothing wrong with a discounted price as long as everything's above board and you know that, right? If you're in a distressed situation or you're in a huge hurry and you're willing to take a discount on your home and everybody's, everybody knows that, that's great. 
People sell stuff on the internet all day long at a discount, you know, used furniture. Hey, it's hundred bucks. Just take it away. Everyone's cool with it, right? If you're in a hurry and you're like, look, I just need to get out of this house by the end of the month. Great. I'll take a discounted price. That's fine. So investors are not bad people. In a, in a lot of ways, they are some of the most productive people in our local economies, in our local neighborhoods. They clean up funky properties. They help families out of jams. Now, some of them do that unethically and I'm not supporting that. But the answer to the question, is it a dirtbag move to look for investment opportunities in this market is no, as long as you do that ethically. Now, we could tell the story real quick of Mason and his wife, Jenny, are buying a house right now during this crazy crisis. It is their home, but it's also an investment. They're actually following uh, a strategy that I put together. I mean, it's not like I didn't make it up, but we crafted a strategy around the tax law. We call it a two-year flip. You buy a home, you live in it for at least two years. And when you go to sell it, a married couple can earn up to $500,000, half a million dollars of tax-free profit. We can get into the details of that later if you think it's helpful, Mason. But Mason and his wife, Jenny, with David, an agent on our team, have just found an incredible deal, negotiated it, and then further negotiated an even better deal on the same house um, in, the, in the exact area they want to live. So that would not have happened. They benefited from a, another buyer backing out of that property due to fear and concern and worry about coronavirus. Nobody did anything wrong in that deal. We, we, we helped a seller out. We bailed a buyer out who was killing a deal and, and we're able to get a really, really great deal in this market and keep moving the economy forward. So lots of good things will happen. They're probably going to do some remodeling on that home and prove the value of homes in the area, the economy, you know, employ people. It's going to be great. So the answer is no, but I know there's follow-ups and, and, and holes to poke in that. So, so go ahead and we'll cover it. Uh, and then we can talk about some different types of investment opportunities in this market too. What do you got, Mason? I mean, we can drill down since you just mentioned it on the two-year flip idea for anyone out there that that sounds attractive to. But uh, yeah, we read your book, Todd, and uh, thought, okay, this would be, actually be a great way to build some equity and have a, have a project to work on around the home, improving it. And like you said, we've got a great deal because of this whole craziness in the market uh, where we put an official backup offer, which is, uh, I thought was commonplace that, you know, oh, it happens all the time. You should put in a backup offer, but it was actually a strategy that not a lot of agents use. And our agent, David, used it to, um, get, to get us, yeah, flawlessly to get us the house, right? To get to, it was what seemed like a, a small chance, but in this market probably was a bigger chance than we thought of the other ba buyer backing out. And eventually uh, got us the house at a great price. Yeah. And, and let's, just, let's just talk a little bit more about that. One opportunity in this market is the number of transactions that are likely to fall apart due to legitimate reasons, right? So it, it is a legitimate reason for a buyer to say, whoa, there's market uncertainty. I'm going to back out. Now, I think if they had a great agent, a great lender and great, a great team, some of them would stay in those transactions because they would see more certainty and opportunity in the market than, than the, the media or, and I'm not pointing fingers at the media, but just the general fear and concern in the air would, would give them. Others of them are concerned about their, their employment, their income, their budgets, and that's totally responsible to do that, right? But a smart investor, whether it be for your personal property or you know, your, your, your full-time career as an investor, will see an opportunity in that backup offer strategy or in what I would kind of call a bailout strategy where you might say to a seller, hey, if for any reason that deal falls apart, you call me and we'll have it back under contract by the end of the day. Now, the formal backup offer is a little bit different. That's where you've got it in writing that if this current buyer number one doesn't work out, we automatically slide into buyer number one position and there is no, the seller no longer has the ability to open it up to public renegotiation. Now, where this was a huge benefit to Mason and Jenny was had that seller done that, they would have had a lot of demand on this property and most likely driven price and value way up. Um, maybe not, but, but it's highly, highly likely. Uh, I think the seller's happy. I know our buyer's happy and I know our agent's happy. So everyone here wins. But 
as an investor, again, whether it's a, for your own property or for your business, that's a heck of a strategy is just to, to be communicating with sellers. Um, hey, if, if you've got a deal together and for whatever reason that deal falls apart and you've lost a lot of time, we can swing in and save you. We, do, we need a discount. <clears throat> we need a discount, but we can still get that done for you. Protect your timeline, protect most of your equity and your future plans. Think about the fact, I always think of a transaction as part of a chain. You know, think of a, think of a long chain with like 100 links in it. It, when one link in that chain breaks, it affects the whole chain. So if one purchase and sale falls apart, the seller was going to buy something else. And then there's a seller of that property. That seller was probably going to buy something else. Now, sometimes the link, the chain breaks because someone's going to rent, but there's a whole other chain there with vacancy and new tenants and old tenants and landlords. So that's where these things really trickle out in the economy big time. So that's a great strategy to say, hey, we'll We'll protect the integrity of that chain and keep that link together, keep that deal together. Um, there are a lot of people that wanted to sell that are thinking about keeping that home maybe as a rental. There's a lot of people that wanted to buy, but they're thinking maybe they should rent instead of buy. I do not think that's a good idea for most people, but people are thinking that. Uh, there are people that because interest rates are so low right now, they're willing to pay almost full market value because they could still rent that property out and cash flow it pretty well. So there's a ton of investment opportunities right now. Todd, you want to drill down into why you think it's not a good idea to uh, choose to rent uh, versus buy right now? Um, yes. Um, the interest rates are so low that the cost of owning a property is going to be quite comparable to the cost of renting a property. Because housing inventory is so low, rental rates are really high, right? When, 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 available, when there's not many properties available, more and more people rent. When, when rental occupancies are high, meaning they're, you know, apartment complexes are pretty much full, How, someone who owns three rental houses, they're all full, then rents go up right? So, when that happens, renting is not really much cheaper than buying. Certainly, and I'm not using this to manipulate, but think about the reality of this. When you consider the tax benefits of mortgage interest deductions and some option, opportunities to depreciate some things and home improvement, you know, there's some, there's some advantages in certain cities about home improvement things and incentives and stuff like that. When you consider all that, you can probably right now in most parts of Dallas, Fort Worth, own a three or four bedroom home for the same price that you could rent a one bedroom apartment. Now, there are some benefits to renting. Let's be honest about that. If you're renting, you call the you know, maintenance person and don't worry about it. But you also build zero equity. You build zero wealth. Right? That doesn't mean renting is a bad idea in every situation. There are some scenarios where renting is much smarter. But if you're simply comparing the two right now from a financial perspective, as low as interest rates are and as high as rental rates are and occupancy rates are, I believe that owning is in not every, but in most scenarios, apples to apples, it's a no-brainer to go ahead and own. There are exceptions, but to be clear, I think that's a huge huge investment win right now. Uh, just to think about the difference between a 4% interest rate and a 3% interest rate, not to even consider the difference between like a, you know, at, at one point, a generation ago, people were uh, mortgaging houses at 18% and now you can do it at three. That's Easy. like, it doesn't even feel like it's the same opportunity. The payment difference is, uh, is exponentially more. It's not even crazy. I mean, it's not even reasonable. So all, all that to say, um, if, if nothing changed except for interest rates, there would be a great opportunities to buy versus rent. But you have the opportunity to buy a home from a low confidence seller. You have an opportunity to buy a home right now with less competition from other buyers. Uh, you have an opportunity to buy a home right now when property values should be really, really popping for spring, summer. They're still climbing, but not quite like they normally would be. So there's just so much advantage. Now, don't do that at the risk of personal safety or personal finance or your appropriate timeline to get yourself to home ownership. But if all those things are lining up and you're respectful of people's 
health and safety, phenomenal time to invest. Anything we haven't covered or you want to cover in more depth? No, I, I think that sounds great. Yeah. And just as a quick heads up, um, in almost every county in Dallas, Fort Worth right now, um, uh, title companies are essential. Mortgage lenders are getting, can do just about everything virtually. Um, we're able to get homes inspected. We're doing a lot with photos and videos and virtual work. Uh, showings are a little bit challenged in most counties. We can still do them if we're really careful in some counties where we can't, we're able to do some tremendous virtual stuff and protect you with a, with a visit prior to closing and a few other protections that we've got some proprietary stuff working on. But for the purposes of this video and education, uh, I think uh, investors are going to be some of the key people that help us recover from this awkward time. It is not a dirtbag move to want to invest right now, as long as you do that ethically with respect to people's safety and health. So hope this was helpful and valuable for you. Hope you found some good tips. If so, would you give us a quick thumbs up? Would you subscribe to our channel and we'll keep making videos like this for you in the future? And you click that little bell that will let you know when we make a new video. It doesn't mean you have to watch it right away. It just lets you know, hey, new video on this topic. Check it out when you're ready. Um, that helps us know what you like and what videos you want us to keep making more of. And that uh, helps people see those videos. Comment below. We read every single comment. We'll reply to you there or we can take it offline one-to-one -one if that's what's best for you. And uh, of course, if we can earn your business, if we can help you buy or sell or invest, that's great. Uh, final thought with all those bigger companies no longer making uh, cash offers on houses for quick closes, we can still do that. We can connect you with a great local investor that's gonna be around long-term and wants to contribute to the community, or we might be that local investor. So if you found yourself in a pinch and you don't know how to get out of it, call us, 214-310-0008, 214-310-0008, or go online to overunderagent.com. It's a weird website because we guarantee to sell homes over the average price and under the average time over under agent.com or all of our information is below this video somewhere. <laughs> so we appreciate you. I know this has been valuable. Uh, let us know in the comments if you, if you're going to put it to use and what kind of investing you're interested in, whether it's your own home or a rental or a flip or commercial or land or development, let us know in the comments and we'll try to point you towards some great resources, whether they're ours or somebody else's. We're here to help. We will talk to you on the next one.